I'm glad you are still with us. We are so lucky to be part of the Senior Action Network and we are going to hear from Dr. Kevin Murphy who just addressed the Senior Action Network about palliative care. So welcome, Kevin. It's just so great to have you. Thanks for having me. It's my pleasure. And I have to tell you, I thought your presentation to the SAN group was marvelous, and I'm really excited that you were able to take a little time so that we can share it with our viewers on TCTV. Well, thanks for having me. It was a real pleasure, and the group was very passionate about learning about palliative care. Right. And so for me, the more that people know about it, the more that people are talking about it, it's just going to increase the availability of the folks in the community being able to access this. All right, now I bet you there's some people out there listening thinking palliative care, what is that? So let's start with the basics. So palliative care is an approach. Mm -hmm. um, it is now a recognized medical specialty and it is fellowship trained after a primary residency, a physician can decide to go into this, but it's not just the physician. So the palliative care team mm -hmm. is a physician and or a nurse practitioner, so an advanced mm -hmm. licensed professional, with a social worker, a chaplain, a pharmacist, we have a music thanatologist. Oh wow. And the whole team comes together with the primary team to look at advanced illness. Okay. And it can be any sickness, any illness, and at any stage of that illness, but the intention and the approach is to look at the patient's wishes, integrating the decisions that are made to align with the patient's wishes and whether that's for or opting out of certain treatments mm -hmm. and that decision is the patient's to be made. We also are very active in pain and symptom management. As a person ages, as their illnesses um, increase, as their symptoms increase, the burden of those mm -hmm. symptoms can really weigh on a person's life. Mm -hmm. and so our approach is to improve quality and to allow people to make the decisions that they want to do. Okay, so give me an example maybe of somebody that could really benefit from palliative care, some specifics. Well, the good part is that there's no rules or requirements for needing or benefiting from palliative care. Mm -hmm. What we like to say is that a life-limiting, life-altering illness, one that is not necessarily going to be the cause of your death, but one that you're going to live with and possibly suffer with for a few years. Mm -hmm. For example, um, COPD, chronic obstructive pulmonary disease, is a chronic long-term illness. Mm -hmm. It's something that somebody is going to have for a long time and for hopefully the rest of their life, they're going to be able to manage that. The symptoms that are associated with it can be very difficult to handle. Mm -hmm. And so- Feeling like they can't get their breath. And the the mm -hmm. inability to breathe, the weakness, the the pain that is sometimes associated with it mm -hmm. can be unbearable. And so your primary care doctor is absolutely able to do what we call primary palliative care. And primary palliative care is starting with the goals, with conversations, with what do you want your life to look like for the rest of your life. Mm -hmm. And that could be years. Mm -hmm. um, you're familiar with advanced care planning, of mm -hmm. course, which should start at 18 for a healthy adult. You don't have to have a plan to be ill. You just have to have a plan, otherwise what occurs could be an accident. Right. But as you do become more and more frail or more and more affected by your illness, having a plan in place is really the important part. Secondly, as the symptoms worsen, the decision to not go through lengthy chemotherapy mm -hmm. or to not have this surgery, not to have a feeding tube placed, things that are not, that you may not think that you have the option in, but making sure that the patient understands that this is your care, mm -hmm. we're gonna give you all the information, and we're gonna help you make the decision that you want for how your life will look. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so it really is about the conversation. It's absolutely about the conversation. And you were listening. I was listening, yes. So, but sometimes it's hard to have that conversation. People kind of back away from that. Right, and that's actually the number one excuse why physicians say they didn't have the conversation. The number two conversation, the number two reason is it's, it's time consuming. 
Yeah. And then my favorite is, well, it's too early. Uh, and yeah. it's, it's always too early until it's too late. Mm -hmm. yeah. And how do, we, how do we make it not so? Right. Yeah. Well, we have it early and we normalize it. Yeah. So Eileen, I'm going to ask you some questions about your wishes mm -hmm. for the rest of your life. And they're just normal questions. It's not because of your current health. It's not because of your, your diagnosis that we just talked about. But we're going to talk about what you want going forward. And mm -hmm. so, and that's going to be about advanced directive. It's going to be about CPR. It's going to be about um, artificial nutrition mm -hmm. and hydration, et cetera, et cetera. Right. And the, the normalization of it, making it just like, are you up to date on your vaccinations? Uh-huh. Um, when was your last tetanus? Right. When was your last colonoscopy? Things right. like that that everybody is pretty much used to. Mm -hmm. We make them used to this. It's not such a big deal. Yeah, yeah. So you're here at Providence. Yes. And you're kind of in a regional situation, Absolutely. right? Not just for St. So Peter's Providence, Hospital. Southwest Washington serves five counties. Mm -hmm. um, our two hospitals down here mm -hmm. are, of course, St. Peter's in Thurston County, and we have Centralia. Um, hospital down in Centralia, mm -hmm. a much smaller, a little bit smaller program down there, but we also have palliative care down there. Mm -hmm. Here in Thurston County, palliative care is provided either in the hospital mm -hmm. or in the clinic. There's also another program through the group health um, folks mm -hmm. um, in collaboration with the Providence Home Health. Oh, okay, I didn't realize that. That's really good. So um, somebody, this brings up some questions they think oh, I'm suffering with COPD or with heart issues and I've got some pain, it's really affecting my life. How do they access palliative care or just even ask the question, would this work for me? Well, asking the question is the start uh -huh. and having that conversation. That conversation can be had with your family or with your primary care doctor. Mm -hmm. Now, palliative care down here does not take over the primary care of the patient. We don't want to be your primary care doctor. We're going to work with your primary care doctor. Okay. My partner over at the hospital um, likes to refer to it. We're going to come alongside mm -hmm. and travel with you on this journey. Uh -huh. And I really like that. Yeah. Because your primary care doctor knows you and you know them. Mm -hmm. But this is more and complicated. And so mm -hmm. we're going to come in and assist with maybe short term, mm -hmm. get you tanked up, figure out what's going on right now, and establish that relationship so that when or if your symptoms return, your condition worsens, or something else comes up, you already have a resource as to where to go. Mm -hmm. And that conversation, of course, starts with your primary care doctor. Mm -hmm. Now, a lot of primary care doctors aren't as familiar with what modern palliative care is, and so a knee-jerk reaction often is to associate it with an end-of-life program. Mm -hmm. And palliative care does not have to be with a, a life-ending illness. And so you might hear, oh, it's not time for that yet. Uh. Right, right. And so that's when education is important, and that's when it's okay to say, you know, I really think that we want to ex explore this. Mm -hmm. Worst case scenario, you see a palliative care specialist, and he or she says, you know what, your primary care doctor has it under control. Mm -hmm. Everything is perfect. You have these illnesses that he's managing. Mm -hmm. I wouldn't change a thing right now. Go back, do what you're doing. Mm -hmm. In six months, a year if the situation changes, mm -hmm. let's revisit that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So it's okay to kind of know that you're on the right path. So making sure that you have a plan in place is really what it's about. Mm -hmm. And establishing the relationship with the players is a great start. Now, mm -hmm. does a 24 year old healthy individual with no um, issues, no chronic conditions, the only medicines they take is seasonal allergy, need palliative care? No. Um, the other limitation is we do require that our patients have a life limiting or life altering illness. Mm -hmm. So we do pain and symptom management, but not simple chronic pain. Um, I had a car accident and I have back pain now. Mm -hmm. Those are usually better suited by pain clinics mm -hmm. who specialize in the chronic pain. Okay. We are. Um, focused more on the life-limiting illnesses that have pain associated with them. Okay, that's a good distinction, yeah. So is there anything that can be done to help them reach out to maybe physicians that aren't as familiar with 
palliative care? Talking about it. Uh -huh. The conversation and the information. We do outreach and we do in-services. Actually, my partner at the hospital and I are in the process of scheduling a blitz to the primary care teams in the um, community mm -hmm. because as our community palliative care program expands, we want to make sure that they are familiar with exactly this conversation. How do I access it? Mm -hmm. Who do I call? When do I call? What should I expect? Mm -hmm. And those are great questions. Yeah. Uh, okay. Well, I'm glad you're here. You've been Northwest a couple years now. Are you getting the little webs between your toes? And well, uh, this, this uh, spring, I certainly wish yeah. that I did have the webbed feet, that's for sure. <laughs> yeah. Well, I'm so glad that you're here and that you're growing a team. I know the palliative care services have really expanded. Yeah, we have really exceptional support from our leadership team at the hospital, our CEO and, and my executive, the um, dyadic partner with them is very supportive of the team of the expansion. We have grown in the hospital, we've expanded out into the community, and within the next few months we will be expanding even further services with the provider, a physician in Centralia Hospital. Oh, that's great, yeah, yeah. All right, well, appreciate it, and maybe we can have you come back and, and talk pleasure. again and remind us and then maybe take us to that next level of um, the music piece, the other pieces that uh, we that didn't would be get great. to talk about. Great, thanks so much, Kevin. Thank you. You bet.